According to CDC, one in three Americans have pre-diabetes, but the scary part is they don't even know. As we live in a very fast-paced lifestyle, work all the time, it's very easy just to grab some donuts on our way to work. As a result, a lot of us have crazy glucose levels, so I get a little bit scared. So I decided to wear a continuous glucose monitor to track my own glucose level. What I learned? Let's share it today. past two months, I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor and I've been tracking everything I eat, my exercise, and my glucose level. The results are shocking. And in today's video, I want to share what I learned from wearing the continuous glucose monitor for the past two months and some of the things I learned about dieting, food, weight, and overall health and lifestyle with you and share my experience with you. Before I start, I just want to do a disclaimer. Notice that everyone is very, very different. What I shared in today's video is merely my own experience and what I learned from my own experience. Everyone's body is different, so make sure you check with your doctor and what I shared in today's video are personal experience they shouldn't be conceived as like medical advice or anything so it's just my personal experience and hopefully will help you out or don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel and check out my other food review videos and without further ado let's get into today's video so I have my little um, talking points listed right here and since I feel like since I shared a lot of food review videos like Costco Trader Joe's hauls and I think a lot of times like people are talking about like I talk a lot about the nutrition facts the like ingredient list and the things like that sometimes like people get offended when I look at the calories but I just know that what you see is only like a fraction of my life but I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor on my arm right here this is not blood glucose there is actually a discrepancy between this one and uh, my blood glucose but I did buy a, a blood glucose monitor not a monitor a meter and then I did my fasting glucose and calibrated between this and also my blood glucose and I also checked in with my doctors I did go to my doctor like in 2020 in 2021 and just calibrate in general about my fasting glucose but the trend overall is a very very accurate the reason why I started wearing this continuous glucose monitor is because I understand how I react to food because for the past 10 years, I've been fairly active. I live a very, very active lifestyle. I work out every single day and I eat generally healthy. Sometimes I snack too much. Sometimes I eat out too much. Sometimes I eat too much sweets, but generally like I eat a lot of nutritious food. But what I noticed was that some days I feel like a big brain fog. Sometimes after eating a meal, I felt like a little bit of anxiety over my heart. I was questioning maybe it's blood sugar. So there are different brands on the market. I personally used NutriSense and I think there was another brand. You do need a doctor's prescription prescription through the brand and they there is a doctor that prescribed to you and then making sure that you're not pregnant or whatever. Long story short, I started to wear this because I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to look at how my blood sugar reacts to my food intake and overall and the result was like shocking. So I'll put a, like a screenshot right here over some of the results. Mainly, I think overall, I don't have diabetes and my fasting glucose is a little bit high. I think the normal range is between like um, 70 to 100. And my fasting glucose is usually 98 to 100, which is like, almost diet pre-diabetes and that was my first alarm alarming sign i went to the doctor and my doctor was like oh, you look so lean you look so healthy my blood sugar was just a little bit high so the doctor told me to eat less carbs some days after eating certain food like rice or corn it just go all the way to the roof blowing my mind and on those days i did feel really really bad like after i eat certain food i started to feel like a little bit shaking i started to feel a little bit anxiety my heart rate was going high I didn't know why I was like I didn't drink so I didn't notice that there was actually a physical symptom when I have a crazy high blood glucose spike so um so I looked at online usually these are the signs that I may be prone to type 2 diabetes and there's another sign that if I keep having these super high spikes when like later down the line I may have a heart attack because it's a lot of pressure on my heart 
I started to experiment with different food and different lifestyles. So in today's video, I want to share with you what I learned. First thing I learned is that everyone is different. Because I've been wearing it and I ask like, a lot of people's advice, like a lot of like nutritionists, health coach, and my friends, and I got so many different answers. I've been experimenting with like keto food, vegan food, and all kinds of low carb food. What I noticed, and also among like friends that I have, who also wear a CGM was that everyone's response was so different and everyone's graph was so different these are personal like data of course but my friends were kind enough to share their graphs with me what I noticed was that like their reactions to food their glucose level overnight their morning readings their general trend during the day how they respond to stress and exercise are so 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 different so this speaks to a lot of the misconceptions. Like I would follow some fitness gurus and health coach and you know people, and then I would do exactly what they did, expecting the same outcome. And sometimes actually I got the same results and other times it didn't work. And I never knew why. I was like, maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe. Eventually everyone is just so different. Everyone reacts to food very, very differently. Like some people can eat lingoons and beans, other people like they get bloated after eating these food if you want to actually change your lifestyle change your diet get some results maybe go to see a nutritionist or a dietitian that maybe you have like an evaluation and collect some data of yourself and track some like how you feel like how your mood feels how your body feels after eating certain food and work with a professional to really create a plan for yourself um, don't just blindly follow like Instagrammers or youtubers just because it worked for them doesn't necessarily mean it works for you like everyone is just so different first thing I think I learned a lesson in a hard way because before I'll be like oh there's like acai bowl trend there's a smoothie trend there's a juice trend and then it worked for some people but it just didn't work for me but now I know like because I was able to look at my data and say that okay I shouldn't be eating that food the second lesson that I learned was that just because I don't have diabetes doesn't mean that I shouldn't be mindful of like eating certain carbs i felt like before i had this misconception that like if you're diabetic of course you have to pay attention and stuff but if you don't have diabetes you don't but that's actually not true what i learned was that like even though most of the times like i'm healthy it's just a certain food like rice and corn oh my gosh like i don't know what is going on with it and those spikes i felt it i couldn't focus after i eating rice i felt like super super tired what i learned was that usually during this time there's a huge glucose spike and a huge glucose crash and those things are probably not good for me Based on my experience, I felt really, really bad. So I started to look up online. I started to listen to different podcasts by doctors and read research articles. And by the way, I have a PhD degree, although I'm not a registered dietitian or nutritionist, but I am a researcher. I'm a trained to consume research. So what I learned was that those spikes are really bad for your health. You should try to have like a little spike and little down, not like this, but like this. So like, your glucose spike should go like a little bit like maybe 120, maybe 130, maybe 140, maybe a little bit higher. That's not a big deal, but it should go slowly come down. It should like, like this, not like this. So on the days I felt really, really bad, it's the days when I had a huge spike and a huge down. And I always feel like I couldn't concentrate when I had the spike. I just felt like very, very anxious. It changed my mood, it changed my body, it changed how I function, and I hated that. So, um, I'm trying to control how I eat, not just because like, you know, I want to prevent diet type 2 diabetes down the road. I may not get it, but also like to really improve my life. All right, so the third thing is carbs and fat and weight. So a lot of my friends that I met at the gym and you know, like in general, they always think about like how to lose weight. And I think of some of my friends, they did the juice cleanse. Some of my friends, they drink smoothie or a meal placement some people they will do like low carb keto some people do vegan like they're just different types of diet obviously and of course there are different purposes of diet like if you go on vegan diet or vegetarian diet because you want to protect animal is different from if you want to go on vegan diet to lose weight if your goal is trying to control weight personally in my case 
carbs actually is the biggest deal. Um, ever since I started to eat less carbs, be more mindful of carbs, I started to eat more protein and fat to help myself to be more satiated, of course. I noticed that like my six pack has just become more prominent. And I don't think I lost weight per se. I don't weight myself. I haven't weighed myself for a long time actually. But personally, I noticed a change in my body because I used to have like bloating a lot. I used to be bloated all the time. And sometimes I have like, you know, water retention over my arms or my legs. Like they look thick, but I knew it's just water. It's not because I gained weight. So what I realized was that there is a big misconception between fat, fats and weight. Like people think like if you, if you eat fat, you're gonna gain fat. That's actually not how it works. Well, if you eat a lot of fat, maybe you will. I'm not saying like it won't, but personally, ever since I started to eat more like avocados and things like that, I actually feel less bloated and I feel like my muscles are more toned. There's a big correlation between carb intake and weight control. So it's just my personal experience. My personal advice is that if your goal is actually to control your weight, carbs plays a huge role because the role of insulin. So I think some people could be insulin resistant. I think I'm a little bit insulin resistant as well. But overall, it's just like, Eating more protein and fat definitely helped me personally when it comes to like being more toned. When I reduce the overall carb intake, I think I have less water retention. I think my muscles are more toned. I probably lost a little bit of weight. Number four, what I learned was that I failed keto. <laughs> I know like based on my story like you may think that like okay so since I wanted to eat less carbs because I have huge spike um, over the um, glucose level and I was trying to try like keto I tried a little bit and not in a I don't think I was in a ketone stage but I was trying to eat more fat than actual like carbs I didn't check myself if I'm producing ketones or whatever so I know a lot of people failed keto because they had this like keto um, flu or keto like down like they couldn't function for several days and they just have to power through that's not the case for me at least I didn't even get to that stage to be honest I failed keto because I just can't eat that much fat and this is not because like I don't want to gain weight or I'm worried or whatever there was a I ate a lot of almond butter and even avocado ate some meat like and I went to sleep because that was my dinner right I ate mainly protein and fat and then I, when I went to dinner, I felt a little bit bad because I felt like I just couldn't process the fat that I ate. I couldn't tell why. It just felt a little bit too full, but I didn't even eat a lot. I was like, you must be keto because people were saying like, if you eat a lot of fat, you get satiated really quickly. But then in the middle of the night, I just woke up and then I went to throw up. I threw up like three times. I threw up and then I felt a little bit better. And then I went to throw up again. I didn't even eat much. It was mainly the avocado and the almond butter and a little bit of meat. And I remembered one time, like my, Husband actually made a soup with a lot of butter and cream and milk. I think it's like a clam chowder that he made. There was so much fat in that food and I threw up in the middle of the night as well. It's not like I didn't have fever. People were saying it's probably food poisoning and stuff, but I didn't have fever, I didn't have anything. I just had to get it out of my body. So I realized that every time I ate like a high fat, meal i feel nausea like i wanted to vomit sometimes i do sometimes i don't if it's during the day then i don't vomit if it's dinner i'll vomit during the night because my stomach just couldn't process it so i just want to say like keto may work for a lot of people but it's just not for me it goes back to number one is everyone is different we all have different liver function we all have different enzymes i cannot process alcohol myself if i drink alcohol i have rashes i'm actually allergic i don't have the enzyme to process it so i just can't process that much fat it's just something like in my body i'm not able to process it maybe it's my liver but we don't know that so just saying that like everyone is different just because like you may want to eat a low carb diet doesn't mean that you have to go keto you can just eat mainly a lot of protein and then a little bit of fat and then a little bit of carbs so it doesn't have to go that extreme 
All right, lesson number five that I learned was that when you have cravings. Okay, so cravings is a thing that comes and go. If you're a girl like me, like at that time of the month, I always crave chocolate or certain sweets. It's just what it is. And what I noticed was that like usually during that time of the month, my glucose level, it just goes up and down a lot. Sometimes I'm very low. Sometimes my glucose is very high, regardless what I do. So what I learned was that your hormones, like different types of hormones in your body, they function together. Insulin is a hormone. Your estrogen, progesterone, and their hormones. Your cortisol levels are hormones. Like there's so many hormones in your body. And sometimes when there's like a hormone imbalance, when something is going on, when you're experiencing stress, it's going to stimulate you to have like cravings or whatever. So having cravings does not mean that you're weak. Having cravings doesn't mean that you're like in the wrong diet. Some people share that as soon as they uh, become keto, they don't crave for sugar anymore. Some people say that as long as they, as soon as they do something, they don't have cravings. As soon as they cut off sugar, they don't have cravings, which is partially true. Um, I think as soon as I started to eat low carbs, I don't crave for carbs as much. But just letting you know, your cravings a lot of times could be your hormone signals and either you satisfy them a little bit or you just tough it out but it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean that you're weak it doesn't mean you're in the wrong diet it doesn't mean that oh my gosh i've been eating wrong and that's why i have cravings it, it doesn't mean that you're addicted to sugar it doesn't mean anything it just means that you have cravings so when you have cravings what do you do um everyone processed cravings differently obviously what i did was i just satisfied my cravings a little bit instead of just like keep having cravings i feel like life is life shouldn't be suffering we shouldn't be just like tough it out all the time we shouldn't be like I don't know, I, I passed that stage, like if I have cravings, I satisfy them, but there is a way to satisfy the cravings without messing up the diet. So the first thing which comes to the tip number six that I learned from my own experience and also from um, the registered nutritionist that I worked with when I was going on this con continuous glucose monitor journey. So tip number six is that the order of eating food matter and also my friend told me a lot about it how you eat like the way you eat what you eat and how you eat actually matter a lot so if you're eating three things such as one egg uh, one potato and one avocado the order of eating those three things three things matter a lot when it comes to your glucose spike so my friend and also my nutritionist was telling me that eat the protein first and then fat and then the carbs so if i have cravings for potatoes i will eat one egg first and then one avocado second and then at the end i will enjoy my potato and usually there's a slower spike instead of like a bigger spike it makes a huge huge difference however it doesn't work for every single thing <laughs> For some reason, rice and I just don't agree with each other. I would still eat rice, but just maybe like a little portion, but not the whole bowl of rice like I used to before. And corn is a second one, but I can kind of control it a little bit by eating less corn. And also like, it depends on the types of corn as well. But rice is the one that like, no matter how I eat, it just doesn't agree with me. So not only the order of eating matters, but also the portion of the food. So if you eat two spoonful of fried rice, it's not gonna be a big deal versus if you eat a bowl of things, right? And then lastly, like some people are more sensitive to something than the others. It's just unpredictable. You just have to test out yourself. So I think this is the most important message that I learned is that eat protein fat first eat a little bit of carbs to satisfy myself and don't eat too much and eat the thing that i really really want to eat so that i don't have to think about it so that i don't have to go binge later number seven that i learned was that carbs are sugar all sugar are sugar i think a lot of times i hear people like eating apples and oranges watermelons and they're like but these are great sugar these are good sugar they're like cherries uh versus like co complex carbohydrates they're bad sugar okay so there is no such thing as good sugar and bad sugar. Oranges are healthier than cakes, not because oranges 
sugar is a better sugar than the cakes. But because oranges has, they have so much nutrients that help you. They, they also have fiber versus cakes. They don't do much for your body. Yes, it's just pure sugar and a little bit of fat. They give you energy, but. There's not new. There's not much nutrients, right? The difference is when you're eating certain sugar, you're also getting the nutrients like antioxidants in blueberries, like vitamins and fibers from certain fruit. Versus if you're eating donuts, what do you get from it? It's just fat and sugar. But overall. I think the biggest misconception I heard is that like certain sugar are better than the others. There is some scientific fact about it because usually the fruit fructose fructose sugar, like certain fruit sugar, it tastes sweeter. You get more satisfied when you eat an orange compared to like a flour dough or a bread because bread are not sweet, but they are really high in carbs. Versus oranges, maybe in the similar amount of carbs, but they're so much sweeter. It's just to our palate, to our taste, it kind of it's not equal. It tastes differently, but carbs is carbs, sugar is sugar, but nutrients are nutrients. I used to eat fruits as breakfast, and that was actually not good for me because I always have a huge spike. And then it just go really, really downhill from there for the rest of the day. But now, now that I have known how I reacted to those things, I will still eat fruit, but I will eat protein as breakfast, and then I will eat fruit as like maybe a little dessert after lunch and dinner, and maybe a little bit snacks in between when I'm not super hungry. Apples gives me big, big, big glucose spikes versus like cantaloupes, they don't. So it's very, very different depending. On the fruit and depending on the person, try to see like which one works for you. Lesson number eight: What I learned was that the so-called healthy food may not be healthy for you. Well, I don't know about your case, but for me, definitely. Okay, so I think previously there was a trend about acai bowls and like juice cleanse and things like that. And I think to some people it's really healthy. I think to some people who are eating like McDonald's every day and things like that, like if you eat. Those instead of McDonald's, of course, like the antioxidants and vitamins and fibers and those things are better than McDonald's. But personally, like I actually had this experience. Like there are times when I eat like a big acai bowl by myself, and I felt I couldn't focus afterwards, and I felt like I'm a little bit anxious, I'm a little bit shaking. I felt like there's like a blood sugar spike, and then it just went down. When it went down, I felt bad again. I noticed that myself, and the same goes to like you know drinking juice, like between juice and smoothie. Like if I drink a smoothie, it's not as bad, especially if I put almond butters in there, of course, or avocados, compared to if I just drink one green juice or whatever juice. It is like I don't know. Like drinking pure juice gives me this shakiness. So what I learned was that the so-called healthy food, a lot of them, although they are healthy because they contain nutrients, they're not that healthy for me personally because I am a little bit <laughs> insulin resistant. I'm a little bit sensitive to the glucose spikes. I experience bad crashes. I experience like shakiness when my blood glucose, my glucose goes all the way to 200. A healthy food may not be good for me, and instead when I just eat some barbecue. Like if I eat a barbecue chicken, I'm actually fine. When I went to see the doctors, like my cholesterol levels are low. Like they're off the chart low. Again, it depends on a person. Like like me, who are okay with cholesterol, but for some reason my blood sugar is just not very good. Uh, this speaks to tip number one: is everyone is different. Just because it's marketed as healthy, hearty,、um, it, it's on every cereal box. Like eating this whole green cereal is good for you. It's it's not for me. Like. It's not good for me. I think another thing is there was a big trend, and I think a lot of people are telling me to eat whole wheat crackers instead of regular crackers, like plain white crackers. So I actually experimented. There was like a Christmas thing in our office, and we have whole grain crackers and regular plain crackers. So the first day I ate whole grain crackers, and the second day I just ate the plain by themselves. And my glucose spikes crazy to the whole wheat crackers. Why? It's because on the whole wheat crackers, they actually put a little bit, tiny bit of three grams of sugar in there. But when you eat one or two servings, it's like six to eight grams of sugar. And with the carbs on top, without any fat or protein on the side, it just went really, really crazy. The same goes to whole wheat bread. Yes, it's a whole wheat, but still. 
to make it taste good. Some some market like some brands they put sugar, and even though sometimes they don't put sugar, if you eat a whole whole wheat bagel, oh my gosh! One time I ate a whole bagel. I think it was kind of whole wheat with cream cheese. Like I spiked to like 190 or 200. It was terrible. Just because something is whole wheat doesn't mean it's healthy. Carbs is carbs. Sugar is sugar. Try to eat less in moderation. And also, I would rather eat plain crackers than whole wheat crackers with sugar on top. It, the plain crackers actually didn't spike my glucose. It went up to 120, and that was it. Versus the whole wheat crackers with sugar on top, it actually spiked to like 160 or something. It's a huge difference, and it was to my surprise. Tip number nine. I think I talked about this a lot. Is moderation is the key, and a lot of a lot of times people don't. Realize that a lot of times people were like, "I can't believe you're eating the chocolate chip cookies," and the other times, "I can't believe you're eating a cheesecake." I can't believe you're eating pies. Those are horrible for you. One bite of chocolate chip cookie is probably not as bad as eating a one big whole wheat bagel. Both of them are carbs. Both of them are carbohydrates. Both of them are made of flours. But the difference is, if you take one bite, you satisfied yourself. It's something you really, really crave for. But you satisfied it. Moderation is the key. I felt so much better. I don't think about those things anymore. Like this clean eating thing was not. It's. It doesn't have to be that clean. But moderation is the key. Personally, it's better for me to take one bite of donut. Like if my husband is eating one, I was just like, okay, give me a quarter of a donut. I satisfied myself. Versus like if I like one day I felt like I really, really, really wanted something, eat the whole box of chocolate, and that's just like. Lesson number lifestyle as a whole, it, it matters. So diet definitely matters. What you eat and put into your body definitely matters. But your lifestyle in general matters more.、Um, sleep matters a lot. I notice that when I don't have good night of sleep, like my cortisol level is high, and my glucose spikes are crazy, 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 crazy. So having enough sleep is the first thing to have like a healthy, balanced weight or a glucose mod glucose level or a healthy、um, blood pressure level. Sleep, exercise is the key, but. Don't think that just because you exercise you can eat anything. I think one time I heard this somewhere from a friend who was 18 at the time. I was like, yes, when you're 18. Your body is a little bit different, right? So she was like, "Oh, I run all the time, run every day. As long as you exercise, you can eat everything." I'm like, "Okay, say that to me in about 40 years." Just because you exercise doesn't mean that you can eat anything, but and vice versa. Just because you eat healthy doesn't mean you don't need exercise.、Um, this is also what I learned from my nutritionist and also online that taking a walk after a meal definitely helped a lot to prevent a dangerous glucose spike. And I actually swear by this because there are times when I went on like. You know, it's like a holiday season. You eat certain things at a party. It's hard to say no to these foods. I just eat the holiday foods whatsoever. I don't care. And then if I go on a walk, like 20 minutes after my meal, like I go on a walk for 40 minutes, usually my glucose spike is not as dangerous compared to when I eat and immediately go back to work and just go like ding ding ding. And honestly, I would rather to. Eat lunch and walk for 30 minutes and go back to work instead of eat and go back to work because I notice that if I go back to work right after I eat, I can't focus because I can work so much more productive. So,、um, sleep, exercise, and also what you do after you eat, what you do before you eat, definitely all matter. But again, everyone is different. Take anything I learned with a grain of salt and consult a health professionals. Like if you want to try something like this, or if you are curious of how your body reacts to things and everything. So, yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope things that I shared in today's video can be helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Before you go, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And before you go, consider subscribe and ring the notification bell. And I will see you in my next videos, maybe a food review videos. <laughs>